Okay, would like to call to order the February 15th, 2016 meeting of the Board of Commissioners of Cabarrus County. It's good to have everybody with us tonight. Uh, at this time, I would like to remind everyone to silence your cell phones and other noise-making devices. And we're very happy to have with us tonight uh, Boy Scout Troop 522 from Grace Lutheran Church for our presentation of colors. After we have our invocation, we'll ask our Boy Scout troops to come up and introduce themselves to us, and we'll make a presentation to them. We're very happy to have with us Reverend, Reverend Steve Ayers from McGill Avenue Baptist Church for our invocation tonight. Reverend Ayers. It's good to be back with you. Last year, I reminded you of one of our events. Uh, it's our 10th annual barbecue, March, 20, uh, March 18th. We believe very much in separation of church and state, but we believe politicians need to eat. <laughs> so come on out and be fed. I think I just said something heretical like, uh, one should not live by bread alone, but one should have barbecue. Well, I thought this year I could add to that and be a real heretic and say, a little barbecue for your stomach's sake. March 18th. All right. May we pray. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can come to you. You are our creator. You have made us each and every one. You have given us life. And we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to, to be together, to know something of the common good and the common will. We pray for wisdom upon these, our leaders. Give them the strength that they need. We remember you've already told us what we need to do but to do what is just, to love mercy, and to be humble. We are thankful and grateful as we seek to do these things and remember those who have little or no voice. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, and if we could have Boy Scout Troop 522 come forward to the podium. And if you would, uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little something about you, perhaps who your parents are, where you go to school, and Commissioner Honeycutt, to your left, to my right, will have a pen for you as you leave. So please, please come up to the microphone. My name is Xavier Ship, and I'm a junior at Jane Robinson High School. My parents are Stephen Tabalee Ship. Great. Thank you. My name is Joshua Ford. I go to Conquer High School. I'm in 11th grade. And my mom's name is Christine Ford, and my dad is Eddie Ford. Great. Thank you. My name is Devin Smith. My parents are Rodney and Tara Smith. I go to Northwest. I'm in 8th grade. Great. Thank you. You might need to pull the microphone down a little bit there so you can. My name is Kenny Thomas and my parents are Yvette Yurigis and James Good and I go to um, WM Irvin Elementary School and I'm in fifth grade. Okay. Thank you. My name is James Farr and I'm a committee person for the Scouts. Thank you. My name is Daniel Barrier and I'm the Scoutmaster, Troop 522, also a Deputy Sheriff. Great. Thank you very much. We appreciate y'all being with us tonight. <clears throat> Uh, first item on our agenda is approval uh, or correction of the minutes, which you all have copies before you. 
And so do I hear a motion that we approve the minutes? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, <clears throat> no. That motion passes. And next will be the approval of the agenda, which you also have in front of you, including changes <clears throat> on page 192. So do I hear a motion regarding our agenda? We need to add about the closed session. Uh, yeah, we just need to add, add one change. We will have need of a closed session to discuss matters of pending litigation. I move Thank for you. approval with that change. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And next we have <coughs> our uh, recognitions and presentations. We're going to switch up the order just a little bit there. She's here. She is here. Okay, then we're not going to switch the order. <laughs> so, so, so first we have a recognition uh, of one of our EMS persons, and Tammy Williams is here, and also uh, Alan Thompson. It is my honor to be here tonight to recognize one of our family, uh, Ms. Tammy Williams, paramedic Tammy Williams. As she enters the time of retirement with her, she has her son, Chief Jake Williams, from Concord Fire Department. Tammy has been with Cabarrus County EMS now for nine and a half years. She came to work for us in 2006, first in the non-emergency division, but then later transferred over to the paramedic side, the emergency side of the response team, and has done exceptionally well for the citizens of Cabarrus County. Uh, it has become truly an integral part of our family with Cabarrus County EMS. Uh, she has attained the highest level of certification for a pre-hospital provider with the North Carolina Paramedic Certification and has been a valuable asset in so many ways. Uh, she has been a continual positive influence uh, for her patients, her, uh, her family at EMS, and for the community around her. Uh, I, can't, I cannot count the number of letters that I have received regarding the compassionate care that she has provided uh, to her patients uh, and the way that she made a difference in their lives. Uh, six times in her career she was recognized for service excellence and has received multiple uh, cardiac arrest uh, SAVE awards. Uh, most recently we just recognized her at our Hearts and Heroes event. And she's also been the driving force behind many of our programs and special events that we host, such as retirement celebrations and others. And uh, now she is uh, entering her own time of retirement. We will miss you, Tammy, uh, but we want to thank you for your service. We want to thank your family for the sacrifice they made as well in supporting her uh, in, a, in a not so easy career. Uh, but you've made a difference. You've, you've done a wonderful job. Your family at EMS will remember you, and you have made a lasting impact in your patients' lives. So today we present a certificate of appreciation to you. <clears throat> Presented uh, December 31st, 2015 to Tammy Williams, recognizing your years of service with Cabarrus County as an emergency medical service provider. Thank you for your dedicated service to the citizens of Cabarrus County. It's been an honor to work for EMS and to serve the county and the people of Cabarrus County. Um, thank you for letting me do it. Great. So, we have a clock here for you in recognition of your nine years of service to the Cabarrus County and its citizens. And I just want to thank you on behalf of the commissioners for the comfort and care that you've given to our citizens and for the difference you've made in their quality of lives. We will miss you and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. And there's the one give you the box. Right. Congratulations and thank you very much for, for your service. Thank you. Uh, for, for any of you that, uh, that were not able to be at the Hearts and Heroes event, um, I, th I think it was just past the weekend before last. Um, it, it is pretty incredible when you have the opportunity to see our EMS folks along with the families and, and the people that they've saved during the past year. Um, it, it's just, it really make, makes you think about it. And it's, it's hard, 
You know, I think probably I admire them more for any, anything else than, than being able to tell all those stories without becoming emotional, because I become emotional just listening to them. So it really makes us proud of that resource we have here in Cabarrus County. So thank you, Tammy, and, and all of you. So can I jump in? Absolutely. I was saving this for the end, <clears throat> excuse me, to comment on that event, but since you brought it, this is a great time. Just two statistics that I wanted to share. Uh, Cabarrus County is twice the national average on resuscitation and survival rates from the cardiac arrest, which is phenomenal. Uh, the citizens of this county are extremely fortunate to know that there's that kind of care out there if you're in need. And then more people survived cardiac arrest this year in Cabarrus County than in any documented time in the past. So I, I'd like to give them all a round of applause. And thank you for what you do. Absolutely. As I've said before, those are the people that you really don't want to see pulling in your driveway, but when you need them and they do, it makes you really, really happy that they're there. Uh, next, we have um, recognition of Humane Society Month. And of course, we've been in a time of transition uh, with the Humane Society and, and the work that they have done for the county, uh, the staff and volunteers. Uh, and we certainly are very appreciative. Judy Sims and some others are here with us tonight, and I'd be happy, Judy, if, if you would introduce the folks with you, if, you, if you'd like to come to the microphone and say a few words, and then we'll do the proclamation. You're a little shyer than I am. <laughs> I have with me Beth King. She's my Ways and Means chairperson on the board of directors for the Humane Society. I have also with me my awesome husband, who is the shelter manager for um, Roos Memorial Shelter, who is also my number one supporter, and don't know what I would do without him um, supporting everything that I do. i um, just like to thank you guys for the opportunity to work with you. You guys have been, have been awesome. I know you've been out to the 49 campus and touring, and I've really appreciated that. Um, I think the Humane Society did some great things, and I'm very emotional about this. I'm very passionate about the animals, and I, I know you guys know that about me, especially you, Mr. Downs. I, um, I know you guys have seen the best part of me and maybe the worst part of me, but it's all been about, always been about saving the animals, and, and that's what we'll continue to do. And um, Roos Memorial Shelter and Princeton Meow is going to continue to grow and we're going to continue to save animals in Cabarrus County and other parts of, of North Carolina and everything that we can do and we would appreciate your continued support in doing that and thank you guys very much. Great, thank you. We very much appreciate what you've done for us and for the animals as well and so at this time I want to read the proclamation and this is pro proclaiming Cabarrus County Humane Society Month Whereas the Humane Society of Concord and Greater Cabarrus County was founded to promote awareness of animals in need of health, help, and whereas the Humane Society educates the community about animal population control and responsible pet care, encouraging pet owners to spay and neuter their pets, and whereas the Humane Society advocates for kind and compassionate care of animals and investigates cases of neglect and cruelty, and whereas the Humane Society provides valuable care by increasing <coughs> animal adoptions, reducing euthanasia rates, and preventing the spread of disease by proactive vaccinations, and whereas Cabarrus County partnered with the Humane Society for operation of the Cabarrus County Animal Shelter from June 2012 until January 2016 and recognized the operations were supported by devoted staff and loyal volunteers. Therefore, be it resolved that the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby proclaim February 2016 as Humane Society Month in Cabarrus County in recognition of the valuable contributions of the Humane Society of Concord and Greater Cabarrus County, and out of respect for the leadership of Judy Sims and all Humane Society staff and volunteers who contrib continue to contribute to our community and to the animals who live alongside us. Uh, so do I hear a motion to proclaim this? 
I'd make a motion that we adopt the proclamation. Great. Second. We, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And thank you once again. And we appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, the next item on our agenda is <clears throat> informal public comments. And I do not have any yellow cards that were turned in tonight. Is there anybody that would like to speak? <clears throat> okay, hearing none. Uh, we will move on to our consent agenda. And of course, you all have that in front of you. Do I hear a motion that we approve the consent agenda? Chairman, I move to approve. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, no. That motion passes. So we move on to new business. First up is an economic development grant request for Project Burgundy, and we this will be a public hearing, and I would like to ask Leanne Nixon to introduce that for us. Hello, Commissioners. Thank you for allowing us to be here tonight, and um, also with me tonight is Samantha Grass, our project manager. Um, we want to bring this information to you tonight and talk about Project Burgundy. The name of the company is Intertate Polymer Group, um, and they are a leader in manufacturing water-activated tapes for industrial and retail purposes. They are considering a Cabarrus County um, as a new possible location. Now, they will not be making a decision on their project until all local and state incentives are available for their review. However, at this time, um, the, the potential state impact incentive package is not available, and so that's one, one delay for, um, for a decision for them that they would be able to review the whole package. Um, so we would like to proceed with the local incentive process so that they can review them and make a decision soon. The company is considering a purchase of approximately 33 acres at a discounted price on a landlocked track of a county-owned land adjacent to Aberdeen Western uh, Railroad near Wallace Road and near the town of Midland. They would also consider building approximately 86,700 square foot building, creating an estimated investment of $40 million. The company plans to create 49 full-time jobs, which are well above our county's average wage at $53,963 a year. This investment exceeds the minimum requirements of the Economic Development Grant. And so we have included in your information tonight an overview of the project, a proposed map um, of the property boundaries, <clears throat> and a Cabarrus County grant analysis, which is based on their estimated $40 million investment, a five-year grant, 85%, um, is $1,190,000, with a net revenue during that five-year period to the county of $210,000. Cabarrus Economic Development supports this project, and we ask that you consider a five-year 85% grant and the reduced sales price for approximately 30, 33 acres on the identified county site. And we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at this time. Okay, could you repeat the name of the company again? It's Intertape Polymer Group. Intertape? Intertape. Intertape, gotcha. Poly okay. Polymer Group, and it's also referred to as IPG. Okay, any questions, commissioners? Okay, thank you very much. And so this does call for a public hearing, so at this time I would like to open the public hearing. Um, and invite anybody that would like to speak on this matter uh, forward. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And then there's one <clears throat> item that, um, that I would like to read into the record so that we'll have this for benefit of our discussion before we take a vote on this. Uh, and this is findings regarding conveyance of Cabarrus County real property pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 158-7.1D. 
and of course Leanne explained that this would be county property where this facility would be constructed. Uh, number one, in addition to an economic development grant equivalent to 85% of the taxes generated on the increase in assessed value due to new real and personal property construction and installation by applicant for a period of five years, the county proposes to sell 33.26 acres of vacant land close to Highway 601 near Midland to applicant at a price of $10,000 per acre. Two, currently the county considers such land to be worth between $13,000 and $15,800 per acre. This yields a discount of between $99,780 and $192,908 on the price of the land. Number three, the county expects to generate positive net tax revenues from this project of $210,000 for the five-year period of and after payment of the underlying 85% grant based on the projections of the applicant and the Cabarrus County Economic Development Corporation. Four, the applicant and the EDC project project that this project will generate approximately 49 employees within the grant period at an average annual wage of $53,963, that's $25.94 per hour. The current average annual wage for workers in the county is $36,446, which is $17.52 per hour, according to the state of North Carolina. The median annual wage in the county is also less than that proposed for applicants' prospective employees. Number five, the location of this applicant's business in the county will stimulate the economy and promote business in that it will result in creation of additional tax base of approximately $40 million and creation of a large number of higher paying jobs in the county. Number six, the conveyance of the county's land as described will result in a net economic benefit to the county that exceeds the discount in the price of the land afforded to the applicant. Number seven, for these reasons, the county believes conveyance of the county's property at the proposed price is beneficial to the citizens of the county and is compliant with the provisions of North Carolina General Statute 158-7.1D. And of course, the, the purpose for reading that is that this is a little bit different from our standard economic development deal in that typically the county does not own property that's used for these, for these projects. So at this time, I'd open discussion uh, regarding uh, this grant proposal. Any discussion from anyone? Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to make a comment for our viewers, because if they just tune in and, and hear this all of a sudden, they're going to think that we haven't heard about it before. <laughs> we have heard about this for quite some time and have really had some, uh, we, we, we've asked the hard questions. And the hard questions that uh, bring the answer that this is, is something we want and need, particularly for the Midland area. Um, it, the company wanted to be on the railroad and there was a site that gave them that opportunity and Midland of course is, is uh, growing and I'm, we're hoping that this will be just another stimulus for more growth in the Midland area. So um, I think it was a very good decision. Great, thank you. Appreciate you adding that. Um, that is good information. I think that as we talk more, um, I think we'll understand more about the connectivity of different projects throughout the county and how what happens on one side benefits the other. Do you have something, Commissioner Shu? I do, Mr. Chairman. And I, on the same lines of what you're talking about, I believe uh, this particular entity that we're talking about uh, is maybe because of another one we did just recently. The, I believe it was the Amazon project. Are they? This is not one of that, I believe. I think Had actually that's for, a project that the county did not participate in, but the city of Concord did. Right, but yeah. it's everybody 
working together for right. the good of the people in Cabarrus County. And uh, just like Commissioner Minot said, this will be a big boost for the economy to Midland. It will increase the tax base for Cabarrus County. The first five years still have a net gain. And then with property owned by the county, there's no tax base there because, you know, the government can't charge tax on their own land. So, so now we'll be able to add that to the tax paying base. And so I think it's a win-win for this company and for the county as well. Great. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, if not, then I would entertain a motion regarding this matter. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the incentive grant for the Intertake Polymer Tape Organization for the 85% of the ad valorem tax and personal property for the five-year period. Okay, do I hear a second? And that? the sale of the property at a discounted price. Yes. With the addition of our attorney's comments there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do I hear a second to that motion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, if none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Uh, that motion passes, and we're happy to welcome Intertape Polymer Group to Cabarrus County. And, uh, and of course, you explained they still got some other details to tend to, but we're, we're very hopeful. Thank you very much. Okay, next item on our agenda from Planning and Development, Kelly Sifford will talk to us about amending the Code of Ordinances. Thank you. Uh, as we had discussed at the agenda session, um, staff is requesting that we um, reinstate testing for non-licensed non individuals doing work on their own homes. Uh, we've experienced an uptick of problems with um, individuals working on their own homes that um, are requiring a lot of time, a lot of revisits. Um, so we want to make sure that they have a basic knowledge and understanding of electrical work. And um, this has been done before, so it's uh, something that has happened before and typically has support from the licensed electrical community as well. And we will need to do a public hearing in order to change the code of ordinances. Okay, so we, will we be voting on that tonight after the public hearing, or will that be at a subsequent meeting? You can do it tonight after the You can do it. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you. Okay, we do have need of a public hearing. So I'll call the public hearing to order and then invite anyone to the podium that would like to speak on this matter. Okay, seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And of course, commissioners, of course, we talked about this at our work session. Um, is there, um, do I hear a motion regarding this matter? I make a motion to approve the ordinance amending the Cabarrus County Code of Ordinances, Article 2, Permits and Inspections. Great. Second motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there discussion? Uh, hearing none. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh. <clears throat> all opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move on to number three. And this is approval of tax-exempt financing for North Carolina Charter Educational Foundation Incorporated. Um, as some of you are familiar, we have had these in the past. Um, this does not involve any finances of Cabarrus County. We do not... Uh, fund it or nor are we responsible for any of the debt um, county attorney would is there anything you'd like to add to that <clears throat> uh, yes this is um, uh, the North Carolina Charter Educational Foundation incorporated that is uh, requesting approval of this tax exempt bond financing the total amount is 125 million dollars it is about half of it is for two charter schools in Cabarrus County one of which is the Cabarrus Charter Academy, the other is the Kannapolis Charter Academy. Um, the other is to be used for some charter schools and improvements in Iredell County. Um, as you, the chairman said, this is not involving any borrowing on the part of the county or the counties um, uh, incurring any debt at all. It is required by the Internal 
revenue service and the Internal Revenue Code for these bonds to be tax exempt, there has to be approval by the local governing board where these, um, where these schools will be located. So that's the reason it is before you. It will require a public hearing and then uh, presumably a, a, um, a vote on a motion to approve it. There are three uh, persons here this evening uh, here to answer questions. We have Brandon Lofton who is here. He's counsel for the North Carolina Charter Educational Foundation. And I think he has with him Sandy Castro, who is one of the directors of that foundation, and also Talitha McGinnis, who is a vice president of the board. So they're here in case any members of, of the commission have any questions to ask these individuals about uh, this financing. Great, thank you. Uh, commissioners, do you have any questions before we open the public hearing? I just have one quick question. I think I asked you this before. <clears throat> Cabarrus County is the only one that has to approve this. The commissioners, the Iredale, do not. No, I think the commissioners in Iredale probably do have to approve it, but uh, Mr. Lofton may be able to answer that question. I just know that for what is going to be located here, it requires approval of this board. Good evening, and thank you for your time. I'm Brandon Lofton, Robinson Bradshaw and Henson uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, here on behalf of North Carolina Charter Educational Foundation. And the short answer is yes, Iredell County uh, does have to have a public hearing as well to approve the projects in, in Iredell County. Great. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, we'll open the public hearing um, and invite anybody forward to the podium that would like to speak on this matter. Uh, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And commissioners, do you have any additional discussion? If not, we would enter, I would entertain a motion to approve this request. I make a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the tax-exempt bond financing on behalf of North Carolina Charter Educational Foundation. Great. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second motion. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. And next item is the item that was added to our agenda. And Jonathan, wait a minute. I'm skipping past one. Um, finance. <laughs> uh, resolution approving installment contract financing. And Susan Fearington is going to talk with us about that. Um, back in December, the board preliminary approved the um, issuance of limited obligation bonds, and a public hearing was held last month on January 19th. Tonight, the next step in the uh, financing will be the final approval of the resolution approving the installment financing for various public schools projects in aggregate principal up to, up to $112 million. Um, although I told you last month that we had two of the bids in, we now have all three bids in that came in. We were very happy about the bids. They all three came in what we were anticipating. So um, we have um, all three bids ready to be awarded, but we have to, um, through tonight's process, we'll have to be approved for the resolution. <coughs> and then we will um, have to go to the local government commission. That's scheduled for March 1st. They always meet the first Tuesday of the month. And prior to that time, we'll have three uh, reading agency calls for Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. Between the next, between now and next Monday, we'll have three, three calls with them just to discuss the state of the union type, state of the county, and different questions from them. So after that phone call, and if the LGC approves the financing, then we will be ready to um, approve the debt, sell a debt on March 10th. Okay. Very good. Any questions for Ms. Farrington? Just one, Mr. Chairman, just real quickly. Ms. Farrington, you might be able to tell me this. I'm aware of the Royal Oaks and the Mount Pleasant bid. How did we come out with the Kannapolis Middle School bid? It also came in under budget. We had anticipated about $38 million, and it came in at $35 million. Well, that's good. That's what, all, that's and then, so, do you mention the other two? Mount Pleasant, we had anticipated 33.8. It came in at 30, excuse me, at $29 million. And then the Royal Oaks, we anticipated $23 million. It came in at 19. Okay, that's great. So, right. Save a little bit of money. Yes. Thank you. Mm, great. Thank you. Okay, at this time I would entertain a motion to adopt the resolution approving installment contract financing for various public school projects in an aggregate principal amount 
up to $112 million, and the execution and delivery by the Cabarrus County Development Corporation of limited obligation bonds related thereto, authorizing the execution and delivery of related documents in connection therewith, and providing for certain other related matters. Do I hear such a motion? Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Minot. Do I hear a second? A seconded by Commissioner Shu. Okay, any discussion? Just one thing, I think we've talked about this a couple times. Just because we authorize it up to that amount does not mean that we will actually uh, use all that amount. But this, this covers the, the, all the variables. Okay, any other discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes. Uh, and now we have uh, Jonathan Marshall talk to us about Raging Ridge Road Extension and Bridge. Just as background, and I'm not sure you need this, we've been talking about this road and bridge for quite a while, but this is Raging Ridge Road is the access road to both Hickory Ridge High School and Hickory Ridge Middle School. It's the sole access point from Hickory Ridge Road into those two schools. And we have been endeavoring to have a second entrance and exit on Stallings Road, which needs a bridge over Back Creek. It's been a rather complicated <coughs> project, but it's both the extension of the road the bridge over, and then also uh, an additional connection of water line to provide a secondary water service to those schools also. Um, North Carolina Department of Transportation um, issued the plans, or issued the final plans, which our engineer had drawn, um, and received bids on February 3rd. They did receive seven bids. Um, the lowest bid was by Country Boy Landscaping. Um, it was 12% over the original estimate. And then in addition to that, North Carolina DOT will oversee this project, do all necessary materials testing, site inspection, construction inspection, which adds 15% to that. Which That leaves an unfunded need of $381,187. Uh, we do have those funds available in a capital project fund um, that was left over from the 2009 COPS that actually financed Hickory Ridge Middle School. So there's a little over 450,000 left in that fund that can cover this amount. Um, you would not need to do a budget amendment, but we would ask that you authorize the expenditure of that additional $381,000 from that fund for this purpose. Correct. Thank you. Any questions for Jonathan? Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chairman, and that is I'm just so glad to see us <coughs> moving that project along because, like you said, it's been several years trying to get that along between the acquisition of the land and working with the different homeowners. One in particular, I think, we had to work with for a while. But I'm just glad to see us get that because it's going to give us another access from Stallings Road to Hickory Ridge Road, and it should alleviate quite a bit of the traffic problems out there. So I'm glad to see that happening. Thank you. And I should note that the town of Harrisburg is also involved in this project. It's been a very complicated project because the number of groups involved, but the town of Harrisburg also has expenses associated with this that they'll be taking care of. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. At this time, I would entertain a motion to authorize the remaining Hickory Ridge funds up to $381,187 to be applied to the Raging Ridge Road Extension and Bridge Project. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Okay, we have a motion. Do I hear a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, we have appointments to boards and committees. Uh, the first one, uh, Andrew Deal, has served on the Cabarrus County Planning and Zoning Commission since July 2012. He was appointed as an alternate to complete an unexpired term and was later appointed as the Central Planning Area Representative with a term expiring August 31st. 2016. Mr. Deal has recently moved out of the central planning area 
and is no longer eligible to represent the central area. It is requested to remove his name from the roster, and we currently do not have any applications on file for that central planning area. So hopefully that will be coming soon. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Andrew Deal from the Cabarrus County Planning and Zoning Commission roster and thank him for his service. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes. Uh, next is the Central Line of Workforce Development Board. Lisa Conger, formerly with Cabarrus County Schools, has obtained employment outside of the region with the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and has submitted a resignation letter from the Central Carolina Workforce Development Board. Ms. Conger has been on this board since June of 2010. An application to serve on the Central Carolina Workforce Development Board has been received from Dr. Carol Spaulding, president of Rowan Cabarrus Community College. The state requires a representative of higher education on the board and Dr. Spaulding would fill that need. Dr. Spaulding resides in Rowan County. An exception to the residency provision of the appointment policy would be needed for her. Uh, so at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Lisa Conger from the workforce, Central Line of Workforce Development Board roster and thank her for her service. I moved. Okay, have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And next we would, uh, would entertain a motion to appoint Carol Spaulding to serve on the Central Line Workforce Development Board for an unexpired term ending June 30th, 2017 including an exception to the residency provision of the appointment policy. So moved. Okay, have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes. <clears throat> Next, we have the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee. Peggy Yo's term on the Nursing Home Advisory Committee ended January 31st, 2016. Due to family obligations, she has resigned from her position on the committee. She has served as a member of this board since 2009. And we do currently have seven vacancies on this board, if any of you listening out there would be interested. Uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Peggy Yost from the Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee roster and thank her for her many years of service. So moved. Okay, have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Uh, next, we have the <clears throat> Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. Uh, due to Frank Lapsley's resignation, the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority has an at-large seat that needs to be appointed to fulfill his unexpired term. An application has been received by Troy Taylor to serve on the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. Mr. Taylor is currently the owner-partner of Jim and Nick's Barbecue and Concord and has been nominated by the Tourism Authority to fill seat number 12 at large and complete an unexpired term ending June 30th, 2016. The Tourism Authority requests a residency exception for Mr. Taylor. He is currently a resident of Matthews. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Frank Lapsley from the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority roster and thank him for his service. I move. Okay, have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. <clears throat> that motion passes. And so I would at this time entertain a motion to, an, to appoint Troy Taylor to seat number 12 at large on the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority 
to complete an unexpired term ending June 30th, 2016, including an exception to the residency provision of the appointment policy. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes. Uh, next, we have the Cabarrus County Youth Commission. <coughs> um, that we have two. Uh, the Cabarrus County Youth Commission had review, has reviewed recent member applications and recommends the appointment of the following members. Napur Parikh from Early College, Child, Early College High School and Mackenzie Arstark, Arstark from First Assembly High School. And so at this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint Nippur, Parikh, and Mackenzie Arstark to fill at-large seats on the Cabarrus County Youth Commission with terms ending June 30th, 2017. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. And that motion passes. And next we go to, and you have a number of different reports attached um, to your material tonight. And at this time, I would open the floor to receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to various boards, committees, and municipalities. Does anybody have anything they would like to report tonight? Okay, any other general comments by board members? Hearing none, I would now entertain a motion that we go into closed session to discuss matters of pending lit litigation per North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3. Is it for economic development? No, and this is for pending. And, and, and economic development. Okay. okay, have a motion. Do I hear a second? Okay, have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Motion passes. And we are now in closed session. Thank you. <laughs>